the biggest takeaway from last night's debate was the moderators. And you never want that to be the case. And we're going to kick things off, uh, of course, getting your reaction all day long. We'll play clips. We'll play some of the ridiculous, preposterous analysis um, from people who should know better. Um, but, but the person that could best speak to the tone, the tenor, the fact-checking of last night's debate is a guy who's been in that chair. And I remember uh, really being so proud of a friend and colleague, Hugh Hewitt, who took to the debate stage in the past. In fact, he faced off with Donald Trump. Uh, he always jokes about having his Trump tattoo because President Trump took a pot shot uh, with him. Uh, and, and, and Hugh, of course, let it roll off his back because Hugh, as expected, did a splendid job as a debate moderator on that world stage. I thought it would be good to get uh, Hugh's assessment for a few minutes. So we welcome my friend and colleague, Hugh Hewitt, uh, our, our, our predecessor, our lead-in uh, on uh, hundreds of stations all over the country to the Mike Gallagher Show. Hugh, they're calling me Nostradamus around here because for a year I've said they were going to push Joe Biden out. Nobody believed me. I turned out to be right. Yesterday I said, I got a bad feeling about David Muir and Lindsey Davis. And a lot of my friends said, no, 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 they're going to be fair. They're going to be objective. Hugh, I, I, I thought it would be bad. I didn't think it would be that bad. Did you? No. Uh, Rich Lowry was my guest. Rich is sort of like me, uh, mild-mannered. He is as angry as I am. It is the worst debate in presidential debate history by a long shot. Uh, Donald Trump lost the battle but won the war last night, Mike. Uh, it could have been better, could have put the election away. He got angry, took the bait, and you'll talk about that all day. But I'm just going to focus on the moderators. I want your audience to, I've done five presidential debates, GOP primary debates, four with CNN, one with NBC, always representing Salem. And they are very elaborately scripted. <clears throat> I use my own questions. I came up with them. But everything to the minute is planned out. So everything they asked was planned. Not one question on China. I think that's got anything to do with Two Disney parks, which owns ABC, being in China. Not one question about Hirsch Goldberg, an American executed by the Hamas terrorists last week. Not one question, not one about Iran. Nothing about Joe Biden's incapacity that Donald Trump himself didn't bring up. The former president could have just put it away. The vice president didn't show anything except she could memorize an effective style of baiting the former president. And but the moderators were god awful, the worst I've ever seen. Well, you you know that I in in on my my side gig once in a while is to memorize scripts and play parts and play roles. I know how to memorize a script. I'm pretty good at it. I'm not great, but I'm a, I'm a pretty good actor. She memorized her script. She had everything down pat. She walked. In fact, it was tightly choreographed. She had it ready to go. She marched over to him to shake his hand. Choreography. She was ready. She stood at that podium and she did all everything. Even the even the goofy hand gesture with the hand on her chin, cocking her head. Yeah, I mean, pon, you know, pensively pondering the lunatic next to her. It was all theater, Hugh. But then again, her whole campaign is theater. This is not a, a legitimate a, a, a campaign in the sense of uh, somebody with primary votes, somebody that the American people picked. The, 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 the big wigs of the Democrat Party picked her. So everything about this is plastic and, and artificial. So why would we be surprised that she was, too, in the debate last night? Uh, but Donald Trump did not memorize his line. And right. uh, it's because he's done more debates than any person in history. He has great confidence in himself. I thought he would do better than this. Mike, I got to say, people applaud your theater and people are mm -hmm. applauding Kamala Harris's theater. They are not. A, no one is defending ABC. People are saying if you're complaining about the refs, you lost the game. Doesn't matter. Refs are still bad. Some refs get fired. I don't think they're going to fire Muir or Lindsey Davis because they can't admit what they did. But my goodness, if they had any center right people, if they had any conservatives left, they're done with ABC. They're done. Oh, sure. Done, 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 done. Yeah, but you know, I, I also worry, wonder about this on a personal level. I remember when you did all those debates, and you and I have worked together and known each other for years, uh, and I've got oh, enormous respect. And 
Yeah, I mean, look, we go back decades. Huge. And, and, We're and I, I, we We're are. We, we, we kid each other all the time, but we are friends. And I hurt for you when you would get criticized by anybody because you are my friend. And you did us proud, incidentally. did an unbelievably fair job and a, a great job in those debates. D- does that criticism, you say it won't get to David Muir or Lindsey Davis or the, or the honchos at ABC. Do you really think they're not aware of the way much of the world is reacting to the biased job that, that they did last night? Now, uh, Mike, this is this is important. Because there aren't any conservatives in the room, I, I don't think there was one conservative in the debate prep room. No one was a canary in the coal mine for them to say, you can't do that, you can't do that, aren't you going to do this, you cannot, uh, you'll lose whatever conservative, you, you'll never get any purchase back on the right. Uh, there are usually between 30 and 50 people involved in every debate session. 30 to 50. Right. Maybe they got it down to 20. None of them are pro-life. None of them understand pro-life people. None of them understand China's a problem. None of them care about Israel. And they, I mean, they brought up abortion again. I mean, it's the third time the Dan Abash interview, the Jay Tapper debate, debate last night, abortion, abortion. It's number eight on the issue set. Number eight. Yeah. And I just, and it was the second question. It was asked by the woman because the woman always wants to ask the abortion question because if there's a pro-life woman in major media, I'm unaware of her existence. Uh, they're all pro-abortion rights. And I'll tell you what, Mike, there's no fixing this system. There's only watching Fox it's, and praying to the Salem News Channel. The Salem News Channel has to, has to grow. And we yeah. have to take over because the legacy media is so badly badly broken and look we're not going to be liberals but we're going to be honest right 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 well look we're the alternative hey, great, let's great face it you. you're, you're sure. pressed for time but you grew up in dayton which is not far from springfield the Correct. good news is all eyes are going to be on springfield and well, they're going to find it. out that that's the good that, news. I mean, that that's the brilliance of what he did last night they can roll their eyes all they want millions of people looked up what's really going on with the haitian problem in springfield and in canton all over ohio it's not and 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 f- finally ohioans are saying good we want the world to know what's happening and that was why trump brought it up last night and i'm glad he did final question for you hugh hewitt um i, I gotta ask you about fact checking what role because this was unbelievable that they fact-checked Trump, I think, four or five times. Five not times. one time, Five times, not once for her. Zero. I, I mean, they're not even pretending to be fair. They're not even pretending to be professional. If you're going to pretend, at least you'll fact-check her once. She lied about the condition of the economy that Trump left them. She lied about IVF. She, the, she lied about the both, both sides uh, are, are fine people crap that's already been debunked. So here's my question. In the five debates you moderated, did you guys go through a, 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 a process of, of trying to anticipate things that the candidate said that you needed to fact check? Was fact checking part of your equation when you did the debate? No, because NBC brought it up. I thought it's a bad idea. They decided they would run a lower third that says fact checking is available at this website. And Matt Continenti made the point on my program this morning. It'll be on my podcast, Highly Concentrated You. I recommend it to people. He said, I'll bet you that the ABC moderators saw the left's hatred of CNN not fact-checking Donald Trump and did not want to get the hate from the left. That's the problem. The blue bubble is extremely loud, and they right. kill people. They drag people who do anything remotely off their script. And so sure. last night was over fact-checking Trump so that they wouldn't get hit by their lefty buddies. Well, I've said it to you personally a million times. I've said it on air a, a two million times. You you did us proud. You continue to do us proud. And last night, you were missed on that debate stage because it would have been an entirely different environment. Hugh Hewitt, keep fighting the good fight. I appreciate you joining us, my yeah, friend. You're talking about Hirsch Goldberg today. Somebody needs to remember him. Thank you very you much. Better, oh, somebody needs to remember, hey, October 7th in Israel, not not an, a, a topic. How about today's 23rd anniversary of 9-11? That never yeah. came up last last night unbelievable right. hugh appreciate you joining us no busy art i'm glad Be you well, stopped Bye-bye. by take care hugh hewitt on the mike gallagher show your turn 800-655-MIKE 16 past the hour i want to get your reaction let's line it up i'll give you the quick assessment you want to take away the takeaway was the the moderators were shockingly corrupt and she brought her a game as far as her performance goes 
President Trump brought his B game, and it probably didn't move the needle at all. But let me get your reaction. 1-800-655-MIKE. We want to put your voice front and center here in the Relief Factor Studios. 800-655-6453. If you're confused and anxious about the media coverage of last night's presidential debate and you're looking for somebody to put things in perspective, you're looking for a, a place to turn where you can relax a little bit, where you can take a breath, where you can heave a sigh of relief, you've come to the right place. Because I promise you, the, the debate was not nearly as good for Kamala Harris or nearly as bad for Donald Trump as many of the hysterics are claiming it to be. Welcome in. What a night. Um, a disastrous performance by two hacks who call themselves journalists. They disgraced themselves and they embarrassed their network. And everybody knows it. I've got Democrat friends who were calling me last night after the debate laughing about the ridiculous way David Muir and Lindsey Davis refused to push back on anything Kamala Harris said, but they repeatedly challenged and fact-checked Donald Trump. Trust me, even Democrats know how bad it was. But, you know, it worked for them as far as they're concerned. She brought her A-game when it comes to memorizing a script. And Trump was Trump. And don't lose sight of that. You want an objective analysis of how people viewed the debate? Go look at the C-SPAN X account. C-SPAN is pretty much right down the middle. They have no liberal or conservative ideology, as best as I can tell. They're like like public access. They they post boring, you know, city council meetings and congressional hearings. And they've got to pull up who won the ABC News presidential debate. You want to know what it says right now on the poll? 75.4% believe Donald Trump won. Only 24.6% think Kamala won. Trump did just fine. And if you're thinking that the whole election just went down the tubes, believe me, you're delusional. You're being poisoned by the rhetoric of people who hate Trump. There's no shortage of Trump haters out there, but there are plenty of Americans who are ready to re-elect him on November the 5th. Here's a little sampling of some of the moments from last night's ABC presidential debate. This has been a disaster for people, for the middle class, but for every class. On top of that, we have millions of people pouring into our country from prisons and jails from mental institutions and insane asylums and they're coming in and they're taking jobs that are occupied right now by african americans and hispanics and also unions unions are going to be affected very soon and you see what's happening you see what's happening with towns throughout the united states you look at springfield ohio you look at aurora in colorado They are taking over the towns. They're taking over buildings. They're going in violently. These are the people that she and Biden led into our country, and they're destroying our country. They're dangerous. They're at the highest level of criminality, and we have to get them out. We have to get them out fast. I created one of the greatest economies in the history of our country. I'll do it again and even better. You know, they had a split screen for the first part of the debate, and they show her rolling her eyes and making funny faces and pretending to put her hand on her chin like she's pondering what he's saying. And again, Trump was Trump. You know how we all said we hoped he presented her with a MAGA hat? Well, he he, he clearly thought about it. Everything that she believed three years ago and four years ago is out the window. She's going to my philosophy now. In fact, I was going to send her a MAGA hat. She's gone to my philosophy. But if she ever got elected, she'd change it. And it will be the end of our country. She's a Marxist. Everybody knows she's a Marxist. And ultimately, one of the funniest moments was when he pointed out how she's just copied and pasted many of Biden's policies There's no uniqueness. There's no change. She's been the vice president for three and a half years. She's part of the problem. He pointed that out last night pretty brilliantly. She doesn't have a plan. She copied Biden's plan. And it's like four sentences, like run, spot, run. Four sentences that are just, oh, we'll try and lower taxes. She doesn't have a plan. Take a look at her plan. She doesn't have a plan. 
And finally, the most brilliant moment of the night. Millions and millions of Americans are totally clueless about the crisis of Haitian migrants in Ohio because the mainstream media doesn't dare touch it because they know it's Kamala Harris's fault. She has She's on record as bragging and boasting about welcoming Haitian migrants to America. And I was praying he would bring this up last night so that the, the, the America that doesn't know this, that this is even a problem outside of Springfield or Canton, Ohio, would know about it. Well, they know about it now. In Springfield, they're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. And this is what's happening in our country. Incidentally, she was trying to cackle, but her mic was turned off. So you couldn't hear it. You're kind of off in the distance. Look, um, it's fair to say that she did a good job in memorizing her lines. She had everything choreographed up to the handshake in the beginning. She was she was loaded and ready for bear. Trump was Trump. He doesn't memorize anything. He speaks from the heart. As I've said all along, the American people are going to decide this election based on the authenticity of one of these candidates and the world knows she doesn't have an authentic bone in her body the world knows he doesn't have to memorize anything and frankly most people know that he did just fine you want to grade the debate she brought her a game he brought his b game the only missed opportunity i thought was when he could have said to lindsey davis and david muir just what the heck are you two doing here tonight why are you fact checking me and and challenging me and letting her lie and lie and lie. I wish he would have said that from the stage, but hey, I I couldn't have held up against one-on-three like he did. In fact, I wouldn't... How many of us could withstand everything that this man is being put through? They tried to kill him, literally. They're trying to put him in prison, literally. They're trying to bankrupt him, literally. So a little debate that has two biased journalists uh, rooting against him? child's play for this guy. He did just fine. Welcome in, 800-655-MIKE. Give me your reaction. I want to get as many calls as we can because I want to get Americans' reaction, like I did last night at the Studio Movie Grill. We had a sold-out theater. We had a great time. Uh, it was it was really an experience to hear a crowd in a movie theater reacting in real time to what we witnessed on that debate stage last night. So we'll tackle all that with you, you and me together. 800-655-MIKE. Give me your take here in the Relief Factor Studios. Your voice, your call, your perspective coming up. Where do you hear Megan Kelly's takeaway on ABC's performance last night? Who boy. Going to play that for you here in a couple of minutes. Welcome in. Lines are jammed. Let's get your reaction to, uh, to last night's debate. 800-655-MIKE. I want you to be honest and give me your feelings. I may, We may not agree. Because I don't think it moved the needle at all. Like I said, Kamala Harris was scripted, was rehearsed. She did what she felt she needed to do. As as Hugh pointed out, she had her lines memorized. Trump doesn't need to memorize any lines. And I really caution you not to overreact. Here's a text message from Texas that I want to share with you. As a Trump supporter, I'm always, I'm by the way, I'm always leery when somebody tells me what a big Trump supporter they are, and then they drop the hammer. So here's what Texas tweets me. 832 area code. I don't know where 83. Where's 832? 832 area code texts, as a Trump supporter, I was sick during and after the debate. Trump blew it. Republicans are very upset he could not control himself and stick to the issues. This may cost him the election. Devastating. Uh, I, I appreciate you texting me, Texas. I appreciate you listening to the show. You're ridiculous. Go get some smelling salts because that's preposterous. Trump controlled himself fine. Of course he's annoyed and mad. He's angry like the rest of us at the condition of America. He's mad that she's this joke candidate. He's mad that he was ganged up on by the moderators. He didn't lose control. Uh, You know how many people right now know about the Haitian crisis in Ohio, thanks to him? You know what the the CNN poll said post-debate? The CNN poll said post-debate about 
Who's better equipped to handle the economy? Trump went up after the debate. So, uh, again, I don't want to be mean to you, Texas. Spare me the melodrama. There wasn't anything devastating. You sound like Chris Wallace. Wasn't any, he wasn't, there wasn't anything devastating. Uh, he, he did fine. I, I, from my perspective, there was one missed opportunity. Just one. And I think it comes from being on that stage, having it come at you from all sides. I wished he would have said at one point late in the night, turned to David Muir and Lindsey Davis and said, just what the heck are you two doing? You have now fact-checked me five times, and you're not going to bother to fact-check any of her lies? I wished he would have just done that. Um, but, you know, the world's doing it now. Certainly Megan Kelly's doing it now. Check out what she said on her podcast. I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted. I'm ashamed of those moderators at ABC News. They did exactly what their bosses wanted them to do. The person who runs ABC News is a close personal friend of Kamala Harris that is responsible for Kamala Harris and her husband meeting. And they did Dana Walden's bidding tonight. It was three against one on that debate stage this evening. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan Kelly. A special program tonight for you reacting to the debate. It was three against one. It's very easy to look like you know what you're doing when both moderators are entirely on your side. Trump did the best he could under the circumstances, but it really was like three fighters in the ring pummeling one opponent. There was an internet rumor last night that she was wearing an earpiece in her earrings, that her earrings were actually well-disguised earpieces. There's a time in my life when I, would, when I would have rolled my eyes at that and said, oh, come on, that's crazy talk. Nothing would surprise me right now. Nothing would surprise me. To watch those two journalistic frauds fact-check Trump and challenge him over and over again and not push back against her one single time, hey, Trump is used to the deck being stacked against him. They want to put him in jail. So a couple of hostile interviewers shouldn't derail him in any way, shape, or form. Of course, now the big question is, does he do another one on CBS? Get ready. We're tackling all of it. I promise. Your voice, your call, your perspective is next. I've talked enough. It's your turn. You have my word. Call after call at 800-655-MIKE. Coming up. 